Welcome back to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. We've been coming to you live from the 34th Annual Futures and Options Expo in Chicago. Joining me at NASDAQ Booth 427, we have Paul Fry, who's the Chief Operating Officer over at Straits Financial with his global economic outlook. And it could not be better timing considering the volatility that came back into the market last week amid concerns of trading tensions with the U.S. and its partners. What do you, are you concerned about this in terms of the U.S. markets and global economy going forward? Well, Joe, thanks for having me, of first of all. Um, uh, you know, it's true that global tensions in trade can make markets, you know, unsettled. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important, though, that the U.S. economy, you fly anywhere in the country, everything's being built, whether you're in Amarillo, Billings, Montana, Chicago, New York. Um, so I'm not overly concerned that it's going to have a drastic impact now, as long as it doesn't last a long time. I think it's important too that, um, in you know, Europe, outside of North America, Europe and Japan specifically, they didn't do, start their quantitative easing until two years after the U.S. So you know, it's been about two years since the U.S. really started to take off again. So my guess is that we'll have years of growth in the Western economies. Right. Well, you know, the equities markets tend to always get the headlines, but there have been some underlying things happening in the bond and fixed income markets. Is there anything there that you're watching? Well, we watch it closely being a futures firm. Um, the bond markets are very important to us, in both in terms of volume and income. Um, we, you know, well, I should say I expect over the next couple of years as uh, inflation to pick up and the bond market to increase as well. I, I think, you know, these efficiencies that have been put in place because of these, you know, there's there's direct, you know, factory to consumer shipping via Amazon, right? So you're taking out the middleman in all these uh, products and therefore it's keeping down prices. But as that flows into the economy um, and it becomes a normal part of the economy over the next year or two, I would expect the bond market interest rates to be somewhere above 5% right. within the next two years, is my guess. Well, you know, it's interesting that you say that because I, I feel as if, you know, we have a generation of traders almost for the past 10 years that have never dealt with a right. volatile market. They've never dealt with um, interest rates at the levels that they are right now, even though by historical standards, they're still low. Um, I, I wonder if traders and investors just simply expect assets to rise as they have over the past 10 years, and that markets are becoming incredibly sensitive to policy headlines for that reason, but it doesn't mean just because you own something, it's going to go up. Correct. Right? And when you have quantitative easing, you know, any hard asset's going to go up in value. When you get the stocks are really hard assets, right? They have a, a mean value. As the currency drops in value, they should, in theory, go up, right? Um, and you're right, there's a whole generation of people who have never seen how volatile an inflationary market can be and how quickly interest rates can go up. I mean, I remember when they were at 18%, you know, so they were moving a couple percent a week sometimes. So, right. you know, it, it can get ugly. Even time. when you look at housing assets, right, just because you buy something doesn't necessarily mean it's going to go up in, in value. And I feel perhaps if we look at it from historical standards where we are right now, it might be a little bit more normal because where we were for the past 10 years, it's not sustainable. You can't right. just continue to buy bonds. I agree with you. Um, and I, like I said, I, I think the um, the bond, the bear market in bonds started, you know, when the late '80s, and that cycle seems to be over. Okay. I would guess. Well, thank you so much for joining us on set at FIA, and remember to join me throughout the day. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Market Reporter at NASDAQ.